Lemon Amiga present. A play giant video review. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hi there, welcome to another Lemon Amiga Play Guide and Review. This time we'll be checking out Syncore Swim, developed by Odysseus Software and published by Zeppelin Games in 1993. On that title screen we can see those high scores and we can also see the makers of this game and more about that a little bit later and by pressing that fire button we can enter the game world itself. See nothing much to write home about on that high score table, although sea creatures are relatively well drawn, and the creators of this game didn't really go on to much either, so we can't really move on to those, so let's press fire and let's check out this game. In Sink or Swim, we control a rescue diver, and it's our job to land on the SS Lucifer, which is in the middle of the ocean and it's sinking. So what can we do? Well, each level contains a number of passengers, and as long as we rescue a quarter of those passengers, they will escape, and that means we can move on to the next level. see a huge ship in front of us and so it's going to take some time to complete the 60 levels in this game. We can move around the platforms and we can jump as well and by pressing fire next to no object it will lay a bomb and if you press fire next to a switch it will then switch something on the level and sometimes you have to blow things open to get the guys to walk in there and sometimes it's not obvious the correct way to solve each puzzle but this is just like lemmings once you've solved the puzzle once then it shouldn't be too hard to get those guys home and you can see that opens up a portal by pushing upwards we can then move on and it also gives us a password patsy for kermit so if you tap that in on Maybe the introduction screen, that should be able to take us onto this level. See Jet Set Willy swinging vines everywhere and cracks on the floor. And sometimes doors will have to be blown open to get past those. Unfortunately you can't climb the chains on these levels. And so on this particular one, let's leave the passengers behind and let's figure out how they are supposed to get all the way up here. This early stage, the levels are very much straightforward, introducing the player slowly to the mechanics of each level. You can see it gives us a target on the bottom of that screen. On this level, just like Rainbow Islands and a few other games that we've seen, the water level rises, and so you'll have to be quick in this game to get to where you're going and rescue all those passengers 
and the passengers are pretty dumb, they will walk over mines and things like that, but you can see we've already met the quarter, people are dying, so let's just leave this level, of course we can't survive underwater, so it's very easy for us to die if we're not careful. Luckily we can swim, and those guys can also swim if we drop the life jackets for them. By holding down fire and pulling down, I think that does it. Or perhaps by pulling down, I think you're dropping bombs everywhere by pressing that fire button. But usually by pushing up and down, that usually works. So you can see everybody's dying and swimming at the moment, gasping for air. What? How? Well, I have no idea. You seem to be dying all over the place. And of course, a crusher will crush us. And you can see the lights go off when... Well, I'm not sure when this bulkhead collapses, but you can see you know, the last guy's died. All we're waiting for is our death. And that means we get to respawn and try that level all over again. And I'm not quite sure what we're supposed to do with this crusher or even this life belt and we cannot guarantee that that's going to save enough guys, eight in this case, on the level and probably best to flip that switch very quickly before the guys fall off into the water and that should mean that they start to climb that ladder. And climb the ladder, it's the switch to stop and start the moving walkway, you can see, and that's supposed to make them go under the elevator. Not very easy, as you can see, and even though this thing has great graphics, sometimes the playability can be harmful, because even at this early stage, level 4, we are sunk. Glug, 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 glug. Unfortunately, we'll get that high score, it's not an amazing one because it means that we're pretty weedy at this game, but we can hopefully enter that password and continue from the level where we left off. And I think you have to press spacebar or maybe escape, it comes up with this screen, and then hopefully we can tap that in on the keyboard. Ring World, no idea what that's from, it could be from a Terry Pratchett movie, and it could be from anything, but you can see, look, we are all the way back and we get to start that level all over again. You can see the clam in the bottom corner with the three against it, that's our lives. And the 14 and the life jacket next to it. And I think, I'm not sure what that means, perhaps 14 can be rescued. The bombs, it says zero, so perhaps have no bombs left. But you can see we still have to rescue six guys on the level. And that unfortunately means I'm going to have to jump across and try my hardest to time this so the guys go through without getting crushed. <laughs> if they don't, unfortunately, they walk the wrong way and that's completely crappy. Look at that, they finally walk the right way. And it's those tricks that you'll have to find as well as wherever the exit gate is because if you don't find that, of course, it will die, and so the exit might have to be swum to under the water in certain circumstances, so now that we know what we're doing, let's get this level under full swing. Let's run and jump across as quickly as possible and get all of those guys rescued. Only three more to get, and as soon as they wise up to where they're supposed to go, hopefully they will follow us, and that means we can leave. And Troughton, I've no idea where that is, perhaps where the program lived at the time. You see, the SS Lucifer doesn't sink, but what it does do is fill it with red eventually as we complete those levels. <laughs> On 
this level we have to master the crane and Andy Crane in this case is not difficult it's just that we have to time that so that we save as many people as possible if you hold the crane over a crate that will pick it up and if we move it left and right that will drop it again and once it's been dropped you can't pick it up again so you just have to pick up another one and then drop it and if you've killed enough people that's level over so you can have to get a move on and you're gonna have to start dropping those things ASAFP <laughs> And so let's press that escape key or whatever key that we need to press and we're sunk again. And so let's try that level all over again. Let's enter that password, Trotton. And welcome to Trumpton. Yeah, right. That's the one. Yeah, right. So come on, let's dive back into that level. And for the final time, let's check out a few more levels on this particular game. Right. Okay, that's, that's the one. Let's play level six. The design of this game was split up between four guys, one of those was Andrew Drake and his only claim to fame on the Amiga for this was Quest of Agravain which appeared I think for Codemasters in 1992. This was 1993 release and by this time of course the creators or rather the publishers of this game, Zeppelin Games, were known on the scene for creating lots of terrible games. Perhaps the worst of those was Fist Fighter, which got an average score of 1.8 out of 10. And we also have the likes of Arnie 2, Ed the Duck 2, and some sports tie-in rip-offs such as Jockey Wilson's Darts and Jockey Wilson's Compendium, which was a game trying to rip off the previous license. We also have various soccer managers, including Graham Sooness Soccer Manager, which appeared in 1992, and that was remade, rebadged, and released as Peter Schmeichel Soccer Manager in 1994. They also ripped off, well, they also released Blinky Scurry School, which is of course a dizzy ripoff, and Titanic Blinky, which was the antithesis of this game, where we had to go around the Titanic. And so the best game that these guys have ever released was undoubtedly Universal Warrior, released in 1993, a hidden gem and a classic, and Syncor Swim ranks up there with some of the best games that they've ever released. This level all we have to do is to rescue one guy and having rescued that one guy it's possible to take that guy up to the top of the screen through the portal and where is the portal in this case let's go down again where is that thing ah yeah, it's on the bottom and of course they will walk left and right completely at random sometimes they will follow us as well so I'm not quite sure how to get the guy to go into the portal but maybe if we stand over here or on this side eventually you'll get that message and unfortunately well we can lift those back up at this stage but that'll kill him so I just have to wait around and see if this guy will eventually walk in the right direction See, some levels have a time limit, some of them don't. And with this level, you don't have any time limit whatsoever. There's one man left out, there's one target to be rescued, and finally he gets it. So we get to move on to another level. So where's the exit? Let's jump on through. And Red Planet is the level that we're on at the moment. Let's rescue as many people as humanly possible. Let's get those life rafts floating around and maybe we're supposed to flick that switch as well 
and a number of switches will appear on this level. You notice every single level is one screen wide, but it can be many screens in height. I did have this game back in the day on a crack copy and I didn't play it that much but it was one of those games, one of those early games that I ended up playing as well as Apprentice which I haven't played since I have to say but holds a special memory for me because it's one of those early games that I remember playing on my Amiga and it's a Lemmings kind of a rip-off clone where people were trying to get into the Puzzlers at this time along with Trodlers and other kind of games that you might remember where we have to rescue people and in this case it's very simple and it's let down by sometimes finicking controls when you're trying to get pixel perfect onto a ladder but apart from that once we've worked out what to do it's not hard and running around trying to find out what to do is perhaps the best policy so it's a time limit so let's run and run run and run again and you can see that that is moving in the right direction that's okay so hopefully we can just switch this one and all of those people will now walk into the exit and if i made that look easy it is because it is easy sometimes when you know how We've reached another password, Megalithic! And Megalithic, you can see some nicely drawn graphics, not much in the music department, and you can see this thing is a step above many games, but for 93 of course, we've had the worst of the worst graphics. They certainly couldn't get away with some of the games that they've released on that level. But you can see this is a playable game and it's got something going for it if you are one of those players that lack puzzles and this is appealing to boy and girl, male, female, old and young and so you can see that all we need to do is flick that switch and those guys will healthily leap off the edge and die so what can we do to stop them from doing that? hopefully if we blow up this crate or move that crate out of the way that means that they should climb this ladder and that means that they don't die as much as they would have died if I hadn't flicked that switch Sink or Swim got lots of mixed reviews the low score goes to Lemon Amiga who gave this 6 out of 10 Amiga Computing gave this 66% Amiga Power gave this 68% Sue Amiga awarded this game 70%, Amiga Force awarded it 72, Amiga Format gave it 73, Amiga Joker gave this game 74%, Amiga Magazine awarded Sink or Swim 80%, along with The One Magazine and Amiga User International all giving it 80%. That means the highest score goes to the ever reliable Amiga Action who gave Sink or Swim 81%, that means this gets a high average score of 7.5 out of 10. This is probably one of the best things that came out of Zeppelin games, so if you like these puzzlers, maybe check it out, and thank you for watching this play guide and review. Thank you.